All right, hello and welcome. I'm Justin Luchens, and today I'm going to present to you how to accelerate your application with CUDA C. So to start off, we want to talk about what G -compu GPU computing is. So in, in our programs, we have some serial code or possibly parallel code that runs on the CPU. At some point, our application reaches a large amount of work, uh, which we can put onto the GPU because it's, it's highly parallel. Uh, and the GPU will execute this, this work uh, in parallel with hundreds of cores versus a CPU, which only uses a, a few cores. Now, the GPU has, some, has very dedicated fast GPU memory, uh, which goes up to 177 gigabytes a second on our current best hardware. Uh, similarly, the, a, a CPU has about 32 gigabytes a second. So you can see right here that there can be a huge bandwidth advantage for using a GPU. Uh, in addition, the, the GPU has hundreds of cores, where, again, the CPU only has a few cores. Uh, and these two are connected together by a PCI Express bus, which gets about 8 gigabytes a second. Because of this, we need to have dedicated memory. Uh, so we have our own GPU memory, and we're going to have uh, our variables will be living, are allocated directly on the GPU and transferred there explicitly. Today we're going to look at a common algorithmic pattern, which is the 1D stencil. And in this case, we're going to be summing the input elements within a, a radius of a 1D array. So we're going to be summing, in the case that we're looking at, three elements to the left and three elements to the right, and that will give us the, the value for the middle element. This type of pattern is fundamental to many algorithms uh, that derive from standard discretization methods, interpolation, convolution, and filtering. It also has applications in seismic processing, weather simulation, image processing, and computational fluid dynamics. So to start, let's look at the serial algorithm. So in this case, we're going to be summing over uh, a certain number of elements, seven in, in this case that we're looking at. And here I have an input array and an output array. And I've marked the, the, the elements that we're going to be summing over and highlighted the element that we're going to be writing to. And as the algorithm moves forward, it will grab each uh, value from the input array and sum them into the output array. And this is going to repeat for every element. So that is the serial algorithm. And let's look at what that code looks like. So in C, what we have here is we have, first in our main program, we're going to allocate some resources. And so when we allocate those just using malloc, or you could use new if you're using C++, uh, and then at some point we get data into our arrays. Uh, so here I'm just calling this function initialize array, but this could be any function that you have to put data into these arrays. And then uh, we call a function stencil, apply stencil 1D. And that function is defined on the right, and I will go through that at the end here. Uh, and that's really going to do the summation that I just described. Finally, uh, we free the resources that we've allocated. Now when we look at the apply stencil 1D function, you can see that we have a for loop which loops <coughs> over loops from the the radius to the n minus the radius. So here what we're going to do is we're only going to be applying the stencil on the inter interior elements. We're going to ignore the exterior elements. This is the common case for, for these types of stencil operations. Uh, generally you have some other function that you are going to execute on, on the on the boundaries uh, where you apply your boundary conditions. Uh, so you loop for, for all the interior elements, and we're going to start by then initializing the output element to zero, and then we're going to loop over the, the seven elements, which go from the minus radius to the radius, and we're going to sum from our input array into the output array. All right, so we do this, and on a, a Xeon X5680, we get about 0.2 giga elements a second. So now let's look at how the parallel algorithm works. So in the top here, I have the serial algorithm. And on the bottom, I have the parallel algorithm. And so when the serial algorithm is, has one thread executing doing the sum, in the parallel algorithm, there's actually many threads executing, as I've illustrated here by the, the orange squiggly lines. And so as the function executes, everything else is the exact same, except that it's now occurring multiple times in parallel. And so at the end, after this is executed in uh, one pass, Many elements have been processed as opposed to just one pass. So let's see how the CUDA C version looks compared to the, to the C version. So on the left here, I have the C version. And on the right, I have the CUDA C version. So here again, we have to allocate the resources as we did earlier. 
Uh, and for this, what we do is we call CUDA malloc, which is a, a, a function that we have provided as part of our API, which is the same as malloc, except that it creates your memory on the device. The uh, parameters it takes is the uh, pointer that you are going to be allocating and the number of bytes you want to allocate. Similarly, at the very end, we have to free that memory, so we have a function called CUDA free, which is designed to free device memory. The next change that we need to make is that we need to copy the data to the GPU. Recall that I said that we have dedicated memory on the GPU. In order for this to be fast, we need to have that memory, that data, as close to the, G to the uh, GPU as possible, and so we put it, uh, we put it directly on the GPU. Uh, here we use CUDA memcopy, which is just like memcopy would be, except that we have one additional parameter at the end, which is the direction of the memory copy. So for the top memcopy here, I'm copying from the host to the device, so I have the CUDA memcopy host to device. And on the bottom memcopy, I have CUDA memcopy device to host, because we're copying back from the device to the host. Then comes our parallel kernel launch, or our parallel function. So this gets called once for each element implicitly. So when we call this, this uh, function here with this triple angle bracket syntax, this is going to be launched for every element. Uh, we pass it, when we pass the parameters in, we pass in GPU memory pointers. We don't want to pass our host memory pointers because we want to have the memory that we've allocated for the device. And then our launch, we include some launch parameters. And these launch parameters specify how many threads we want to alloc we want to execute. All right, so now let's look at uh, the what we call the kernel or the parallel function and the differences between them. Here I have highlighted in in yellow the different changes that we have to the C code. So if you notice here, we've added this global keyword. This global keyword specifies that this function is going to be ex executed on the device, but called from the host. And the next change that we have is that we have to compute our index. And so in this case, we use the formula listed here, which is the common uh, formula that you will use uh, whenever using CUDA C for 1D kernels. Uh, next, what you have is a, an index, uh, a bounds checking on the index. So we do this because you may launch more threads than you have actually elements, and you don't want to access beyond the end of that element. Uh, in this case, that this if here is the exact same condition that you have on the for loop. Other than that, the code is the exact same. So we do this, and we see a kernel-to-kernel -kernel performance speed up of about 25x on our uh, Tesla C2075. This is versus a single core compiled with ICC. If you have a little more time, there's a number of potential op optimizations that you can make. One is that you can use CUDA shared memory, which we like to think of as a user-managed cache it takes about an hour of work, and if you do this, you get a, a large performance increase over the initial naive implementation, uh, about a factor of two. In addition, we can also take the original CPU code that we have, and we can parallelize it with OpenMP, and we can add vectorization parameters in order to, to get more performance out of it. And if we do that, we get about 1.7 giga elements on the, on the CPU code. So in total, once we have the full optimized parallel uh, CPU version compared to the optimized GPU version, we get about a 6x total speed up. Now with GPU computing, we have a lot of tools that you can use. These include Parallel Insight for those of you who use Windows and Visual Studio, uh, which is a parallel debugger and a parallel profiler, which is, uh, works on our GPUs. We also have the Visual Profiler, which works on Windows, Linux, and Mac, which is a profiler which tells you counter information on, on the performance of your kernels. You can use this to optimize your kernels by determining how much time you're spending in, uh, in various portions of your kernel. In addition, we have CUDA GDB for Linux and Mac users, which is just like GDB, except that it can, ha it can work on the GPU and it can be used exactly like you would normally use GDB. And now I will show you, so now I'm going to show you GDB in action. So to run GDB, CUDA GDB that is, I'm going to run it through DDD, which is a visual debugger, but you can run this just in the command line. And in this case, 
you do ddd dash dash debugger space cuda dash gdb space run gpu, where run gpu is the command I want to debug. And this is going to load up. We'll wait for this to load for a second. Okay, here we are at gdb. Uh, you can see this application is here. You can see the main program. Uh, you can see so, uh, here you can see some disassembler of the programs. So you can see the actual machine code. And down at the bottom you can see that you have your uh, <coughs> command window. In addition, we have we have sorry, this little command tool here, which we can use to step through and run our code. So if you start, I'm going to add a breakpoint on the main. So I'm going to type break main. And then I'm going to click Run. Now, our code is now running, and I can step through this normally. You'll notice uh, here we have CUDA malloc as the line of code that I'm on, and I can step through this as I would normally. This is just a regular CPU function called on the host. GDB could do this. What's more interesting is that we can, we can actually go into kernels. So if I can go up here to the kernel that I have, the apply stencil 1D, and I can add a breakpoint. Break and now if I click Run, or I continue, that is, it's going to start executing. And at some point, it's going to stop. And so here, we are now debugging on the GPU. I can look and see what our block index and block dimension and thread index are, which are part of the, the formula, formula that we use to compute that unique index. And I can look and see what the index actually is that I'm that I'm operating on. So here we are uh, in block one, or block zero that is, thread index zero, and we are at index zero. Same time I can type CUDA thread, and I can type a number, and now I'm going to be on thread five. So now I'm now on a different thread of execution, and you can see that the index here has changed. Uh, I can also similarly go CUDA block one and switch to block one. So this is now a different group of executing threads. And here you can see that our index is now 261. Uh, if you look back at that formula that we showed for indexing, uh, it was the block dimension times the block index, which would be 256 times one plus the thread index. And that's where 261 comes from. Now I can step through this code. And if I wanted to, I can inspect variables. So here I'm going to use a, uh, I'm going to type in the display here instead of double clicking. So I'm going to do graph display out bracket i. So I get a unique index. I get, uh, depending on the index I'm on, this variable is going to change. And I'm going to do the same thing for in bracket i plus j. So this shows me the value of the input array and the output array that I'm stepping, that I'm uh, currently accessing. And so as I step through this, you can see that the output array just changed, and that's why it's highlighted. And now the input array has changed because j was incremented. And as we go through, you can see that the, that the debugger is fully functional. Uh, if I'm interested, I can look at the machine code here, and I can see our, our machine code. Uh, and so here we have a, a fully functional debugger. And with that, we're going to go back to the presentation. So in summary, uh, CUDA is fast. We achieved a 6x speed up for a Stencil 1D on a Tesla C2050 versus a fully parallel Xeon X5760. You know, CUDA is easy. We made very few modifications to the C code. Uh, we could describe it in just a few minutes, uh, and most of the changes were very small and straightforward. Uh, CUDA is also free, and you can get it here at our website at www.nvidia.com slash getcuda. And another note is that CUDA has a rich ecosystem. You know, we have C and C++ that you can write in. You can also write in Fortran. Uh, there's other bindings for other languages that you can use. We have a lot of developer tools, including debuggers and profilers. Uh, and there's already many parallel libraries that exist. Uh, this, these are very good for you to use because you don't have to go through uh, the process of creating your, the algorithms, you can just use a library to do it. If you're interested, you should become a registered developer today. Uh, you can do that at http colon forward forward developer.nvidia.com slash join.
Thank you.